Hello and welcome to the brand new series here on Chills and Thrills called Tears for Fears. And we're doing that with a couple of beers. Hey, yeah. As I was opening this before um, we started and everything, um, it, so it had that ra it had a wrapping on it. And just opening it was like opening a Rubik's Cube. Mm -mm. It was absolutely dreadful. Like It was really... T it, it, you, I didn't even get it all off. There's still shit on it. Mine was easy. I just twisted the cap. That's true. You did. <laughs> okay. So, tears for fears, a couple of beers, anyway. Um, so, what we're going to do here is we're going to do the totally new and inventive thing of making a tier list. I can tell it's brand new and inventive because I was told that everyone's doing it now um, and we're totally behind on the game. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so we have all 16 movies that we have watched from the Little Vault of Horrors. We're going to put them all into tiers. And starting off with the lovely Black Mountainside. Where would you say this, Lance? My esteemed guest. My esteemed guest, by the way. Uh, the producer of Little Vault of Horrors. Hi. Storm. And also co-host of Tears for Fears. I would say it's not bad, but it's not good. Not bad, but it's not good. Okay. Um, so Castle... Fr <laughs> Well, if you're okay. going to do that, then no. I'm done. No. <laughs> no. All right. So, yeah. No, I would definitely agree. Definitely. It, it's not a bad movie. It has a lot of, like, interesting things that go to it, but it also has its things that make it, uh, mm. like, really frustrating to watch. Is that, like, really long, kind of drawn out? It was, yeah. The, the one, yeah, yeah, you remember which one it was, right? You get that one and um, the were ritual in... confused. Oh, it's not the one with it's not the hitchhiker or the yeah. not hitchhikers. It's not the hikers. It's the um the explorers, the archaeologists. They're in Canada. Giant. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Sock puppet deer. <laughs> like that's if I think uh, Kabu does the same thing where he's just like, what movie was that? It's like sock puppet deer. <laughs> like oh yeah, sock puppet. Was deer. that the one with the kitty? Um, no, no. With the scientists. With the scientists, and they're um, sitting at a table talking about like whiskey or something. And oh yes, yes, yeah, it does have the cat. Yeah, it was it was sadly sacrificed to the great deer puppet, to the great deer sock puppet. They should make those. They probably do. And chills for thrills should be the one that makes them. I have no problem sacrificing a couple socks to make a yeah sock puppet deer. I throw some out just about every time I do laundry. So so yeah, there we go. The holes are the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's up in deer eyes. <laughs> I definitely know how to sew. Hence my gnome way off in the background that no one can see. So you mention it? Yes. Okay. What the hell? What? Holy sh... My, my beard just foamed over. Please hold for technical difficulties. Do, 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 I have to do, chug it. Oh god, I have to get drunk on camera. Again, <laughs> again. Like that was like anything different. Okay, so yeah, Black Mountain Side. It's not bad, but it's not good. Like I don't remember much about it, so That's that's usually okay, so that's what we're gonna use as the baseline. If it's something that we don't remember, it's not bad, but it's not good. Or maybe it needs improvement then, if that's the case. If it's something that I mean, if it has nothing or uh, We'll see. We'll see how it goes before we have our final uh, decision. Because next up, excuse we have. Me. Oh, you're very excused. You're good. You're good. Don't worry. I've done way worse on camera. Hey. Yeah. I've. Uh, anyway, um, so our next one is the very first episode we did, which no one had a choice in, <laughs> because I was like, we're gonna do this thing, and I'm gonna just go and tell you what we're gonna do, and that was Castle Freak. What would you? tier this because I know where I would tier this according to Kabu I would tier this as un and believable I believe that you would put that there I would not actually I would actually put it on a category above that no <laughs> I would I'd put it on good same oh uh, good yeah okay yeah it's a good film it's like it's an older movie and it's not like relevant to today but it hasn't like until aged made, poorly uh, until Barbara Crampton produced well yeah it. Until like, it hasn't until. aged poorly. Like, you look at it, no. and, like, it doesn't have bad effects or, like, really cheesy. 
CGI or anything. Yeah, yeah it's it's like especially all that one scene. It's like that's cringy. The nipple. Yes, and you just want to look away, <laughs> Did, but you can't look away. That was so close to winning an award for our um, WTF moments at um, the the Little Vault Horror Award ceremony. There, uh, this close, but I think all of us were just like. Everyone turned to Ulysses. Come on. Ulysses. Ulysses. Just like, oh, but it does. It has some really good stuff in it from the um, from the nipple being bitten off and just just how disgusting Giorgio looks. It was like a fatality film. in Mortal Kombat. He does look, oh my God, he does kind of. Fatality. He, he, oh, I, I want to see Castle Freak in the next Mortal Kombat. Oh my God. Biting nipples off and shit. Uh, so yeah, so the next film that we're doing is our final episode the final movie that we did the final movie that we did for the season and that was the elf where would you tear this i know where i'm tearing this it was bad i was going sand levels of that bad like it is the like, sand it was bad, levels of bad. I, went, I don't know i don't know no because i was gonna put it like top tier the sand levels of bad like it's this movie and then it goes into like the higher the bad category or something like i mean that. at least the elf had a couple moments where it made me laugh really i think so you sure that's not horror hotel oh god that fucking movie <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that movie was that was something yeah, I'm that made it in by my decision it was bad so just bad yeah not sand levels of bad, but no. bad. Yeah. Okay. All right. I guess I can uh, allow that then. All right. I mean, this is this is you as a co-host. You are the producer, so I can't really tell you what was bad and what one was not. <laughs> yeah. What what parts made you laugh in the elf? I don't even remember. I feel like I laughed at something, but. Huh. Okay. Oh god, I burped. Anyway, um, so okay, so from the elf, and now we go into the endless. So, if you don't, do you remember anything from the endless? The uh, I know giant jellyfish thing under the boat. Yeah, and it was like the not like the alternate relate uh, like alternate realities, but it was warps. like these time yeah time loops things, yeah. and they're stuck in an endless loop. Yeah, they messed the matrix up. Yeah. sure that don't bubble up again um if i were to put somewhere i would probably put it under needs improvement if it's either under needs improvement or something like the top tier of bad i say needs improvement because it took so long to explain the story then you got like 10 minutes of action at the end yeah. it's like well what right yeah no understood like i just watched this two-hour movie what why is the payoff the, the final yeah. three minutes? <laughs> like, I can't think of the name of the movie, but um, it was the one where like the kid became like the ancient god or something. The sister got beheaded because of an allergy. Oh um, oh my god, Hereditary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. At least like, that had more like action going on. That was on like too. long and drawn out too, but it had a lot going that they needed to explain. So it wasn't right. like bad. It was yeah. weird. It was very weird. That was a very like psychological like that was a mind trip. That movie, Hereditary. I really liked the ending and what they did with it. Yeah. I know that's not this movie, but no, yeah, no, this one. This like is... I feel like if they kind of took that approach, yeah, it could be a lot better. Oh yeah, I think so. Like too. explain more about the coal, why it's like this, what happened to make it like this. And... Yeah, and you know it's funny because I remember because uh, the same guys that did the endless, they did a movie called Spring, which I was watching on Shutter, and that movie is it's it's so good, it's really good, like it has all these different like uh these cool like things that they do with it, like the girl that he's crushing on, she turns into like some like fucking mermaid thing, and she just looks horrifying at points and like that movie had so much going on through it that kept you in that keeps you invested into it the entire time that it's on whereas the endless it had me sitting there i i remember falling asleep during it even. yeah it's like ah oh. but uh yeah definitely i i guess uh i guess needs improvement would be the place for it bam there it is so we have officially got our kind of baseline going here 
which is nice. Uh, a little thing about the Elf, too. It was kind of funny with that because we were watching it before the end of the year awards. Mm-hmm. And that was... It was so weird because it did not make it to uh, actually winning any of the any of the bad awards where the sand just sweeped all of them. Yeah. Because it was just like, well, I mean, yeah, sure, the Elf is bad. But it's not as bad as the sand. And that was just, yeah, so, anyway. Uh, next up is Juwan the Grudge. I'm putting that stairway to greatness. I'm putting it good just because, if I remember right, we watched like the third one or something. Yeah, it's the third movie in the series. So we so the story out. was a little confusing. Like I had seen, I believe it was The Grudge, not Juwan, when oh, I American was younger. One. Okay. And it freaked me out so bad. Like I would watch it again. Like I obviously we watched have, the third we, installment. We have yeah, it now. We have it now. So we have. But the it one. freaked me out so bad because I don't know if it was um. Is that the Kayako? Kayako. Oh, no, 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 no. Toshio. Toshio is the yeah. child. Yeah. I don't know if it was um, still Toshio or not, but it did like this freaky like crab walk or it like... No, that's Kayako. Kayako does the... I think it was Toshio, though. Really? I think so. Was it a small kid? I think so. Like, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but... Right. Just, ugh, those movements. Yeah, they are unnerving. Well, it's, uh, it goes the same like when we watched Last Shift, which we'll get to later but that a crab movement I, I can't remember the movie it was a, another horror movie um oh bray wyatt when he was doing it in wwe like yeah that was freaky he's freaky now when he's the fiend like this oh. but there was this movie i watched um it was something to do with either her having twins or her like twin and she was like blind in one eye or something with her eye the shining no Ghostbusters. <laughs> I think Jessica Alba was in it, if I remember. Jessica right. Alba. I think. I have no clue. I have never heard like, of this. I don't know if she got possessed or what it, what happened, but like, there was a staircase and just that and that's creepy what they do? crab walk going uh, down the stairs is like, ugh. Disgusting. But okay, so if Juwan's going good, I'm putting it on the high level of good. So I'm putting it above That's fair. Castle Freak. No? There you go. Hey, there we go. Okay. So there we go. Juan is above Castle Freak now. Yeah, that's fair. Fair? Okay, okay. Well, it's okay. So why? So what, what keeps Juan out of the stairway? I think just because we watched it out of order, so the story was kind of confusing. and okay. Like, you got the premise of it. Right. It wasn't a bad movie. Like, you can still watch it on its own. Oh, yeah, but totally. But it's like the book, the author I'm reading, James Rollins. You can read them out of order. Right. But it makes so much more sense if you read them in um, sequential order. Okay. Then it's like, oh, my God, this is what happened to this character. This yeah. is what happened. And you get that, like, nice story build up. Right. It's probably like the... um. I think it's called Omega Days. I can't remember. Uh, that's the um, the author of that zomb- those zombie books there mm. that we met at uh, Terrificon in Connecticut. Uh, just uh, I th- I think I don't, I'm not sure about that now that I say it out loud. Uh, you might be able to read those out of order. I'm not sure, but also you might not be able to. Mm. I'm almost positive you should not read those out of order, and I'm just talking out my ass right now. <laughs> Man, that beer hit me hard. <laughs> oh my God. After it fizzed out of the freaking. Half of it's all gone now because it fizzed out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Almost did it again. Anyway, um, so now we're moving on to probably the, probably one of the most famous, more famous movies that mm. we've done on this channel, and I wouldn't expect it to be the last one because what we have 1922 coming up on the Little Evolve Horrors uh, when this releases, we've already watched it. Uh, when we record it, <laughs> and or wait, no, no, we will have already have watched it when we re- uh, screw this timeline thing. Anyway, Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> God damn it, Silence of the Lambs. Where would you go and put this? Right on the cusp of Stairway to Greatness and Unfucking Believable. Really? Okay, so it's like top tier Stairway to Greatness. Yeah. Real? Oh wow. Okay, I would have put it on Unfucking Believable. Because it is just, it is, it's a classic for a reason. Like, it is that goddamn good of a movie. It's just, 
All the, the Anthony scenes. Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins is goddamn unbelievable. Like, if they were to remake that movie, and I hope they never do. Never remake that movie. You can never time. get another Hannibal Lecter. Or, if you were to make a remake, who would you have play Hannibal Lecter, though? I'll get to that in a second. Okay, yeah. But you can't do like have this beautiful actor of Anthony Hopkins. Have him do such a phenomenal job. Absolutely kill the role. You can't expect someone to fill those shoes. Wait till you hear what I have to say for that. Hmm. As far as if they did do a remake, who would I want? Who would you want? Hmm. Who do you got? I have Benedict Cumberbatch. The hair slicked back and everything, just... I could see him making a good... Well, I mean, he plays a sociopath in um, in Sherlock. So it, he has that like, he has that kind of that sound that sound in his voice that makes him sound so, like, I'm superior and everything. Like, when you see him in Doctor Strange, he has that voice. Mm. So Sherlock, it's that same thing. I could see him looking into the looking into the glass with a wild look in his eyes saying, Hello, Clarice. Like, that is fantastic. Oh, God. Man, fuck you, Disney. For stealing Mr. Cumberbatch away from us. Yeah. For Marvel films. Um, so, yes. I am so mad that that one got snubbed on awards for the award show. I am so mad mm. about that. That one and The Thing. I was so upset about that because those are classics. But, uh, oh well. Majority rules. <laughs> Damn it. Um, moving on to another movie. Um, we have The Last Shift, which we men mentioned earlier. Where would you put that? I think I'd put it after Juwan for good. Juwan? Okay. So after Juwan, before Castle Freak. Is Castle Freak the bottom of the good? Yeah. Oh my god, really? Okay. Alright. Well, maybe. We still maybe. got... Yeah, we still got stuff to go. Nine movies left? Uh, it looks like... Eight, nine? Nine, nine, yeah, we got nine movies left. Unless I can't count, which I can't, so I'm guessing. I'm just saying what you're saying. <laughs> All right, so. So, last shift, good. Why? What's what's up? What's, why, why? What, what, why, why'd you, what, what? Uh, uh. It definitely had its, like, well, it was a horror movie. It definitely had its horror elements, like... The jump scares, like... One of the best jump scares I've seen in a while. That desk, oh. Mm. I'm getting nervous sitting at my desk yeah. now. It's like, uh, it's just face popped up. Uh. And it's like, you really it's empathized gonna... with the main character. Because, like, she lost her dad. Mm. She's this rookie cop in a new station. Well, old, new old station. Uh, well, new to her. Yeah. It's like when you buy a used video game. It's like, well, it's new to me. Yeah. Or when Charles Manson used to see TV shows in jail. Well, I've never seen it, so it's new to me. Yeah. But it's like she's this rookie cop, basically. Goes to this new station. She knows no one. Mm -hmm. And it's basically guard duty. Right. And if anything happens, send them to the other station. And it's like, that goes so well for her. Oh, yeah. Because well, they're terrible to her. Oh, yeah. They're such dicks. It's, and it's, it's like, I get kind of messing with the rookie and everything. But it's mm. like, they're terrible. Terrible That's not even her. messing with a rookie. That is, listen here, if you don't just shut up, we will front, we will let you go. Like that's basically what it was. Yeah, after. like, was like what the hell? Facing termination. Yeah. Just because she has like questions or needs help, like. Yeah. Yeah. And just throwing yeah. her to the wolves. Like yes, it's this basically abandoned station, but they know stuff goes on there. Right. Like yeet. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, I like the um. However, I do enjoy the uh. The the officer that shows up midway through it was like a price or something like that. Yeah, I think so. I, I enjoyed that one. It didn't like drag out too long. Mm. That was like, oh, he's been dead the whole time. It's like, oh no, he is, no, he turns around, bullet wound in the back of the head. Like, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> I was waiting for like uh, she was gonna call him, but like uh, Lieutenant Pierce was or whatever his name was, came down. He checked on me, and they're like, he's been dead for. Like six years. He's been dead for seven years. Steve the Realtor died in this jail seven years ago. 
But okay, yeah, I, 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 I could see it being above Castle Freak in a way. <laughs> anyway, um, so next up we have the, I think, the last of the foreign films we have. Yeah, this is the last foreign film that we have. Um, the Similars, which we found on Netflix by accident. Yeah. This was the uh, same as like Castle Freak. No one really, we didn't have a say in this one. It was just, we started watching it because we were bored and we were like, how about we just do a Vault of Horror episode on this? Like, yeah, okay, yeah. So, where would you put this? I feel like you won't like my rating because we'll say I it did the... not have the same feeling as everyone, everyone else. else did. Really? I was not big on it. Really? Okay, what would you say it is? Because, like, it's not a bad movie. I appreciate it for what it is, and it is something, like, different. Okay. I'm trying to remove, like, personal bias and just judge the film itself. Personal bias, okay. I guess I'd put it under good. Well, I mean, it does, your own personal bias is included into this as well. Well, yes. So, I mean, it's it's not, because we all know how I feel about it. I was on I was on camera talking about it. This is about Top how, tier on F and believable. I, I would put it at maybe at least Stairway to Greatness under Silence of the Lambs. I don't think it was as great as Silence of the Lambs, but I mean, but I mean, like, yeah, I mean, personal bias. We all know how I feel about it. I'm, I'm on camera every week talking about these movies. So this is kind of like your time to shine and just be like, okay, yeah, what, what do you think of these movies? You're you're watching them every week. You're watching along with us every week. So it's like, what do you think of these films? So is it good or do you have, or you think it's even less? Because like I said, it is a good movie. Mm-hmm. Like I like the premise of it, what they did with it. It's something original. Right. I don't know. I just wasn't sold on it. Okay. So, keeping it in good. Yeah. Okay. Would you put it above or behind Last Shift? I feel like behind Castle Freak. Really? So this is the bottom of it. Okay. All right. Do you remember we were watching uh, Beelzebub? And we found the similar poster in there? That was awesome. That's such a cool little Easter egg in there. <laughs> I, I was so happy. I, I feel like there's so many people that are probably watching that movie and and it didn't say the similars if I remember right it no said it said Los, Los Parecidos. Parecidos yeah the actual like Spanish title like, <gasps> like I remember seeing it and I'm just like I wonder how many people like saw that and probably were like freaking out like I am right now then it clicked like probably not many people probably not You'd a lot of people you'd be surprised oh yeah probably I'm sure there's like a I'm sure Los uh, Los Parecidos has a pretty big following but yeah I, I'm, I don't think a lot of people were watching Beelzebub thinking Oh my god, there's yeah. Los Parasitos. <laughs> there's the similar. Oh my god, I love that. It was just, I just saw, I remember seeing the little green poster. I'm like, it looked like Rewinding it like three times to get a perfect yeah, pause. Yeah, I just pause it. Like, it's Los Parasitos. <laughs> it felt like Vince McMahon. That's gotta be Kane. <laughs> um, all right. So the similars is the bottom line of good. Where does Shark Knight 3D fall? Oof. Oof. Indeed. Hmm. I'm not sure if I should put it bad or sand levels of bad. So, wow. You're saying Shark Knight is worse than the elf. Hmm. Elf was really bad. That's why I'm thinking it was. It should have been sand level. We can move Elf if you want to move it now. Yeah, we move can it, move it. Sand levels. Or are you putting it into the the uh, unf and believable category? Yeah. Okay. Sand levels are bad. There we go. We have our top tier of the sand levels of bad. Okay, Shark Knight 3D, where are you? I'll put it... Mm. Just above it. <laughs> <laughs> you thinking about it? 
Because I don't know what they could do. Like, I know you guys do the fix and everything and what you could do to fix it, but yeah. I just don't know what you could do to fix that mess. There's some things. I think we suggested, like, uh, have it be a person that's, like, biting people. Like a cannibalistic scuba diver or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'll put it in bad. Put it in bad? Okay. All right. Oh, God. Yeah, I remember that because you, you ducked out the last, like, the 20 last 20 or so act minutes. Of, yeah, you were like, I have to go to the bathroom. I was dying. Yeah, Wendy's is not fun sometimes. Yeah. The chili's not fun. I was but sick for a was, good week. Yeah, you were. Yeah. But I remember that. Yeah, we were sitting there like, yeah, you, you're lucky you missed the last 20 minutes. No one wanted to be here for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> it was just so unbearable. It's I hated it. I really hated that movie. Um, so I okay. I'm pretty sure I know where you're putting this next film. Um, and you know what? And it all comes down like for me personally, where I would put I put it bad, like low tier stuff. Like sadly, Doug McClure just does not click for me. Apparently, like there's just I've seen three Doug McClure movies now, and not a single one I've sat there going. Oh, that was this good. Is fantastic. I, I feel like I have found Jesus. No, Doug McClure is not my Jesus. Um, but the movie is Humanoids from the Deep. Where are you putting this? I wish I could put it beneath the sand levels of bad. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's the... Like, there are certain subject material that did not need to be in there. Right. It's cheap heat, I always call it. Yeah. It's just you can easily make anyone despicable by putting that in there, and just if you don't put it in there and you make people hate that character, you've done a good job at writing. Otherwise, it's lazy writing. Yeah. So okay, so sand levels are bad. We're yeah. Okay. Extremely. Like right. I feel like it could have been a good concept, kind of have like these fish creatures almost. You could have put a, even a Lovecraftian twist to it. Oh, oh my god, yeah, the shadow over Innsmouth, basically. That would be, oh my god, that would be sweet. Like, do that. Make it, like, soul-chilling scary, like. Mm. We have, a, oh, speaking of Lovecraft, like, fish people things, we have a, we have Dagon on a list of movies that we might do this season. So maybe we'll have a chance to actually see a Lovecraft movie. <laughs> but, yeah, that did not need to be in there. Yeah. No, definitely agree. Like, Yeah. Yeah. And for anyone wondering what we're talking about, it's, uh, yeah, just you watch the episode. It, yeah. Link below. No, 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 not link below. It, it's probably somewhere. Yeah, it might be actually. No, actually, uh, just click on the playlist at the end of the video. I'm too lazy to put links in. I, I tried that before. I almost forgot to put the, um, the charity in mm -hmm. for uh, Shark Knight. I was like this close to like clicking publish, and I was oh. like, oh, "Oh wait, that's right." And I went and looked up shark bite. Doc, or I think it was biteback.com or something like that. It sounded like that. But I went and save a, whoosh. and I'm hoping a lot of people are donating to that cause because that is a super good cause. So, really good cause. It's not often I show I have heart. So, be sure that you donate to that cause. It's such a good cause, um, and. So, okay, so we're going from Humanoids from the Deep to, uh, we're going from the ocean to the bayou with this next one when we go to Tucker and Dale versus Evil. So, we know Tyler LeBoyne. Uh, oh my god, what's his name? LeBoyne? LeBoyne? Le I don't know. Uh, but we know him I from... I know him as Bart Wysocki from Reaper. Yeah, that's where I know him too. Like, that, oh, that show is so good. I can't. I, it, it's shocking that uh, Kevin Smith is behind that film. Hashtag that bring movie. Reaper back. I would love to bring Reaper back. I think they just got to points in their careers where they're like, we want to do our own mm. thing, which sucks. But it did bring us the most funny thing ever. Seeing, um, I can't remember his name, but the guy that played the devil, uh, playing a priest later in Psych. Yeah. Like that is just fantastic. I think we saw him something else too, didn't we? Yeah. Oh my god, what was it? It's, um... Oh, anyway. But yeah, so. Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, where would you put this? It was one of those movies, like, it has stupid but intelligent humor. Yeah. And usually I do not like movies like that. Even, like, stupid but intelligent. More so, like, well, stupid yeah, humor. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you hate scary movie. 
Yeah. But you love Naked Gun. Yeah. But you hate Spaceballs. But you love Austin Powers. Yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> Where does that make sense? <laughs> None of that makes sense. Do 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 do. <laughs> do 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 do. Oh my god. <laughs> but like, it's so funny because like when we're, we're talking about like talking to mom and dad about it, it's like, I'm like, yeah, she, uh, yeah, she didn't like space balls. Like, what? No way. And they're like, oh, yeah. and like later on, it's like, oh yeah, I showed her naked gun. Oh, she must have hated that. No, she fucking loved it. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen, man. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen's the man. I gotta show you Dracula Dead and Loving It. I think you love that one. Um, but. Right now, it's I put it. Um, I think right behind Silence of the Lambs. Right behind Silence of the Lambs. It's easily rewatchable. It's funny. Oh, whoops! Oh, I just I just ruined all of it. Oh no! Oh my God! Wait, what'd you do? I went and lifted uh, the thumbnail. Oh no! No! Oh my God! Oh my God! Okay. (laughs) But I feel like it's one of those movies you can rewatch like again and again, and like pick out the little things like you may have missed the first time. And yeah, I think so too. Yeah, it's a good movie. I really enjoy that movie. And it definitely has like horror elements. Like it's a definitely a horror comedy. Yes. But it's like you think what well, something's gonna happen. Like oh, like they're skinny dipping in the lake. Like oh my god, they're gonna kill them. It's all the cliches. And it's like these nice hillbillies. Who don't know why these kids keep dying on their property yeah and they're just trying to help but they don't realize because they think they're bad people and yeah. most quotable movie i think for a little vault of horrors just from who we officer we've had a duty of a day <laughs> <laughs> just there's days like i or there's times at work while i use that and just like oh i had a doozy of a day <laughs> all right tucker and dale stairway to greatness um okay so does, is Unf and Believable not even like? Is is there a single film? You don't have to tell me which one. Just is there a film on this list that actually will make it to Unf and Believable? Or do we have to go and move our things around again? What was this one? That's the Innkeepers. Mm. Let's do, let's rank that one now. Then uh, what do you what do you think of the Innkeepers? <sighs> it's not bad, but it's not good. Really, you'd put it under not bad but not good. The innkeepers. The innkeepers. It's uh, the ghost hunters that are at the. Uh, the hotel. Yeah, the hotel, whatever it was called. The Cracker Barrel Hotel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd put it under not bad but not good. Not good, bad but not good. Um, uh, above or um, under, Black Mountain side. Uh... I'd put it above just because I remember more from it. Wow, okay. Is it because Sarah Paxton's in it? No. And Sarah Paxton is an alumni that we will never forget. Wait, hold on. What other movie was Sarah Paxton? Oh, she was in Shark Knight. Mm-hmm. Oh, good to see that there was improvement then. I can't remember. Oh, no, she was in Innkeepers first, wasn't she? I think so. I think she was. Oh, my God. No, poor Sarah Paxton. Oh. She was good in her Disney days. What was she in Disney. don't have my phone on me so i can't oh so we can't do that oh in the comments tell us what movie or what disney thing sarah paxton was in yeah um so it wasn't halloween town that was um someone oh, else was it, no hocus unless she was pocus in the, no no unless she was in like the not remake but the older halloween town well i guess it would be oh. newer halloween town oh okay because the original girl left Oh, so she was a replacement girl? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, God. Did, was it the same character, or was it... Yeah. Oh, no. Hey, oh, it's so bad when a movie has to do that. Because I, I can't remember that actor's name, and I'm sorry, but her name was Marnie in the... Um, I think they're movies. And she was great. Like, she was so perfect for that role. And then Sarah Paxton. And then you get Sarah Paxton, and it's like, that's not, my, that's not Marnie. It's it's a thing where you take away a beloved character and try to replace him with someone else, and you're just like, no, that's that's not that's not my Marnie, you know. Um, I'm trying to think like it's kind of like when remakes are made. Like there's always that group of people that's like, oh, it's not my Pennywise, you know, like or um, it's not my Star Wars kind of thing. 
that kind of deal. But yeah. It's not like they ever um, recasted Castiel. It's always been Misha Collins. But right. it's like, you can't get someone else. And it's like, that's not my Castiel. Yeah, you, you couldn't do, yeah, you couldn't replace Misha Collins. No, without a doubt. All right, so this next movie is so infamous that we have a tier named after it. <laughs> so I think this makes it a little easy. What are you talking about? It's un believable. It's un believable how bad, bad this it movie is. is. It's the sand. Oh, Where me. would you put the sand in this conglomerate of amazing movie titles and not so amazing movie titles? I feel like I would put it... Humanoids is definitely way bottom of the tier. Okay, so the sand is above humanoids from the deep. Just below elf or above elf? Um, I feel like elf is sl- like a tinge above it. All right, so I'll put the sand right there. So far, this is all looking good. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. I have to put. I have to do this well by the uh, the producer. I get fired. So, <laughs> tears for fears be canceled just like that. And we won't have to wait, or we will have to wait longer than 365 days to the next one. Um, so, okay, so this was a movie that got three out of many of the awards, or got quite a few of the awards uh, at our award show. So, the best looking monster, I think it was best looking film, also it took, and also holy shit moment of the season, and that's the thing. Where would you put the thing? I think that might be the one that's... On F and believable. I would agree 110%. It's like, I know it is technically a remake in and of itself. Correct, yes. Yeah. But that's like the one that's like most well-known, more or less. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's plenty of um, remakes that are more well-known than the predecessors. Um, don't ask me what they are now because I can't remember. Oh, Little Shop of Horrors. That's a, oh my god, that one's way more, Mm. uh, the one with Rick Moranis is way more famous than the one with Jack Nicholson in it. Um, But yeah, definitely, I I would agree. Yeah, this is more, the more well-known one. Like it was made in 82, 83? It's, yeah, it's 82, So it's a considerably older movie, and it still stands the test of time. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Like, back then there wasn't really a such thing as CGI, like it was very much in its infancy, just kind of coming out. So it's all practical effects, and I know you can preach for hours about that. Yes, I can. But it still stands the test to today. Yeah. Like, has great um, cinematography. Mm. Um, I can't think of who started it. Not Tom Hanks. Um, Kurt Russell. Yes. Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it was a great monster. It was a great movie. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. I, and yeah, no, I agree 110% with the un and believable It's such a good movie. It's There's nothing in it besides the computer technology that could really date this movie. Uh, everything else is just like, oh, shit. Unless there's a day that we just find out that we can shoot... Oh, actually, no, we can't shoot exploding bullets now, can't we? But, uh, like... Yeah. Unless we find, unless there comes the day that we could just use teleportation, and it's like, well, why didn't they just use teleportation yeah. to get out of Antarctica? You know, like the only, only, only bad thing about that movie, and this is just coming from me because I'm a huge animal lover and I hate seeing that type oh, of thing, yeah. is the poor dogs that fell victim to the creature. Like, I looked away several times. That hurt of, to watch. A lot of poor dead animals. Especially since they were like huskies or malamutes, and those have a very special place in my heart. So I very much had to look away. That definitely deducted it a bit for me, but still, yeah, great movie. Yeah, it's like uh, the audition. That poor pup. Oh, I felt so bad for that dog. I was like, no. Like that. Oh God, we we might have to watch that again too, because mm. uh, that's on the list this season also for possible uh, watches. Um, but speaking of animals. How about animatronic animals? As we go into the Banana Splits movie. Which tra la 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 One tra banana, la, two banana, three banana, four, four bananas make a bunch and so do many more. I actually learned that song just so I could do the intro for that episode. <laughs> like, I was, I remember doing it and my uh, mom actually suggested it. She was just like, well, why don't you, um, why don't you do something like the theme or something? And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. One banana, or one banana, two banana, three banana, four. Will banana splits make it in the little vault of horror? <laughs> uh, so the banana splits, where would you put the banana splits? 
I feel like I'd put it right before Tucker and Dale. Right before Tucker and Dale. Okay. All right. And this was a this was a kind of a shock film. It was like a, a kind of hidden gem. Very hidden gem. Because I was expecting it to be very cheesy. Yeah, we were all were. Well, I remember like walking through Walmart and we we're like, oh yeah, let's just let's just get this cheesy looking horror film. It was either this one or Nightmare Cinema we got, and we were like, banana splits. There's no way this thing became a movie. <laughs> And we didn't even remember what banana splits were. Because I remember, um, because, yeah, it was funny because I was like, I don't know what this is. And then when I finally went and watched it, I'm like, I know that song. Oh, my God, I know this. <laughs> but that was awesome. But was it good. really did a 180, I think, for everybody. Because we were all like, kind of expecting this, like, cheesy B movie. Yeah. And it was actually, like, really good. Mm. It was extremely good, I thought. And it's, you know, it's funny with it because um, I remember um, seeing, like, the reviews for it and everyone was, like, really mad about it and everything. It turns out, like, if you ask a lot of the people that were a part, that are a part of the horror community, they love this movie. Uh, Fangoria, I went and said it had one of the best kills of 2019 in it. Which uh, one was that? Uh, the Saw, the magic mm. trick, uh, Abracadabra. Like, oh my god, that was, it's such a great kill, and the use of practical effects in this movie are fantastic. I mean, there's a couple where it's like, ah, this, yeah, that's really mm. bad, and it's pretty much the, the head falls off, and blood splurts out, and that was like, eh, that's not fun. But, it's, other than that, it's like, it's a really good movie. Great movie. Alright, so it comes down to this. We've finally ended this up, ep- we're finally finishing this episode. One more movie to go. One more movie. Before we wait another 365 days to do another one of these. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is actually this is like nice because it's like the shorter episode we'll have. After this, it's going to be long. Yeah. Because there will be like 50 some odd movies that we have to go and rate. And this is a lovely 16. But anyway, so our final movie is Vault of Horror. The only anthology until season two, or oh, wait, no, that's right. When this comes out, we'll already have done Horror Hotel. So the first of two horror anthologies that we have done on Little Vault of Horror. Where would you tier Vault of Horror? Keeping in mind, it is named after us, even though it came out first. Also remembering that if we say anything bad about it, there may be legal repercussions. I feel like I would put it after Last Shift. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's so right there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, why, why would you put it under good? Well, I know there was... It was an anthology, so it had, like, several stories. I will be honest. I don't remember all of them. Okay. I know there was one with, like, vampires or something. If I told you, if I described the main character of each story, would you be able to remember it? Maybe. Okay, so... Guy that went to kill his sister. Is that the vampire one? That's the vampire one, okay. Um, OCD. That was the... Didn't she accidentally kill her husband, or... Yep. Okay. Magician. I don't remember that one. Uh, it's the um, the Indian rope trick that we saw in um, oh my god, Death by Magic. He was he was talking about it. I remember that episode. Or, I don't remember the. Maybe it was like rope to the rope to the heavens or something like that. Maybe something it was called, like that. Something like that. Yeah. Um, painter. The painter. Um, oh my god. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, the more, the more, one of the most famous guys on that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking Doctor Who. Um, oh my god, what was the other ones? I can't remember, I can't remember the other ones right now. Oh, um, insurance fraud. Took a couple pills and the fake his own death, and then his buddy was supposed to dig him up. His buddy blew up and... He got brained with a shovel. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I can't remember the other one, if there's any other ones. I think that might be it. Might be all. Might be it. 
Yeah, that might be all. All right, so yeah, there we have it. We have done it. We have put all of it into one single tier. It's not a good looking video, but it is a video nonetheless. And it's a video that we have made together with yeah. you in front of the camera for once. Actually, um, no, wait, that's right. This is actually your second time on camera. Oh, third, third time on camera. Because you were on for Silence of the Lambs, and you were on for the Halloween special that we did for uh, just get, kind of getting to know us, which now people now know who we are. They know about us, and they care about us because they keep watching. <laughs> they keep watching these videos because they love us so much. Or something like that. <laughs> anyway, so there you have it. Are you comfortable with this tier? Alright, now let me just put the sand on unfucking believable and <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, just tune Drop in. a like down below. Oh, yeah, that's it. I was going to just say tune in 365 days from now and check out when we do season two. Uh, tune in Monday for our another episode of Little Vault of Horrors. I don't know what it is yet because at the time of recording, we haven't watched 1922 yet. <laughs> We do that tomorrow as of recording this. Uh, so tune in Monday for another episode of Little Vault of Horrors. And uh, get ready for more things to come here on the channel, new series and whatnot. I'm um, thinking of doing like a video gaming little thing. I'm also going to do a new thing on for... Um, or we're going to start doing more terror radio episodes and whatnot. Uh, so yeah. Uh, where can they find you on the in, in the internets? You can find me on Twitter at Stormy6, S-T-O-R-M-I-I-S-I-X-X. -X. And you can find me at Horror Bruce on Twitter, H-O-R-R-O-R-B-R-U-C-E. The tagline is Dave Cronenberg's The Bruce. Uh, thank you for watching this video, and until next time, good night.